through and then we'll take questions. Well, one of our goals with a lot of, a lot of games that uh, we play either home or far away, uh, we want to try and get it as close to a 40 minute game as we can. Obviously, we have lack of depth, lack of size, and there's only been a handful of games where that has come to fruition, but I thought we had a good game plan against them. Buffalo was three and three in their last six games. They're on the road. We knew we would have a great crowd. We had Kate off her bottle at night, so uh, the spirit of her, I think, was in the house along with her family. Um, and we made it exactly that. It's tied at halftime, uh, out rebounded this team, um, held them to 33%. And unfortunately, we had too many uh, droughts. Uh, first four minutes, we didn't score. And then from the eight minute mark to the four minute mark in the second half, uh, they went on a 7 to 2 run. And I thought that was the difference in the game. Um, the team can get a lead late on us. Uh, it's it, it's hard for us to find our fifth gear with a limited uh, depth um, on, on our bench. And uh, with that said, we, we played eight kids. We've got uh, double digit minutes out of everybody. We were kind of subbing, subbing very liberally because, in my eyes, I thought this could be a 40 minute game. And I wanted a, um, some fresh legs at, at the end. but. Uh, with that said, credit, credit Buffalo, uh, they made the plays they needed to down, down the stretch in the last four minutes, but uh, we had a great assault effort. Right? A, we had a great assault the glass. I mean, we out rebounded a taller team uh, compared to turnovers in the last game. We had 23 versus 14, and in my opinion, we still had some boneheaded turnovers today, but uh, it did lead to points. So they only had seven points off turnovers, which is a big difference. First game, they had 40 points on the pain, and today they only had 18. So um, not even a difference between the two two games. And we thought it could be that way, but uh, unfortunately it doesn't show up for us in uh, the win, win column. Um, a couple more shots get to fall during that first four minutes or during that eight to four minute stretch in the second half. And I think it uh, goes down to the final possession of the game. Talk a little bit about your zone defense. Obviously, that you made them a jump shooting team, and, and still we managed to do well on the boards despite the zone as well. Yeah, we we've tried zone before and have gotten out rebounded, and we've tried man and gotten out rebounded. We've tried a couple different things, and uh, I thought the, the zone played uh, saved our legs a little bit, and they got a little little tentative. This is a team that shoots 24 percent at the arc overall in the season, so. Um, we held them to 15 to 30% overall. And it looked like they were really dependent, or they were taking a lot of threes early, certainly in the first half. I think they had double figure, yeah, they had 11. I, mean, I, I would have to think you're happy with that kind of game plan, with them becoming an outside team and all the pain and all that stuff. Mm, she made a good adjustment uh, from the, about six minutes to, to four minutes. During, during our drought where uh, they went a little bit more high-low. Uh, they got a couple of catches in the middle of the key mm -hmm. and uh, got a couple of jumpers that, that way. But, uh, but with that said, I think we're a good man team, but we're undersized and our kids bought, bought in. Uh, I didn't know, I didn't think the Buffalo would be prepared for us to play 40 minutes and zone coming into it. And so it disrupted their momentum some. Really wanted to get shots late in the shot clock. I, I was fine if we had shot clock violations because we were controlling tempo. As you said, John, there was a couple times where they got frustrated, and um, and, and that was the kind of the game, game plan to see if they could pull pull apart a little bit. Um, and I thought they did a little bit. I know there were different droughts where different things were kind of happening. But was there when you were in one of those droughts? Was there some kind of a common denominator that you saw? The shots. shots. <laughs> well, and, and good shots missed, or? Yes, we met, we had some missed shots, and then we had some catches where we were doubled, and we have emphasized in practice, get comfortable being uncomfortable, and passing out of the double team, and be confident passing out of the double team. There was um, probably three or four times where we missed high lows. We got catches in the middle of the key and missed kickouts because we were uh, not squared up to the hoop or we were uncomfortable being uncomfortable. And, but, but that said, we, we had a horrible practice yesterday and turned it over a, a ton and just 
night and day difference from yesterday to today's effort and yesterday's uh, turnover and to turn, turn, high turnovers in practice to today's low turnovers in practice and night and day difference between the first and second time playing this team and uh, that's all you want is growth and we put ourselves in position to make it a 40 minute game and unfortunately those two, two droughts as I said, I mean, it's eight minutes where you score two points, 40 minute game, fourth of the time you score two points uh, against a team where if, if a team's shooting a high percentage, I mean, you're, you're going to go down double digits, but uh, Buffalo was only shooting in the low 30s. Kind of touching on your point of being comfortable while being uncomfortable, um, it seems like you guys handle their full court pressure pretty well, and I know that had been something you guys had struggled with. I mean, you guys still made a few mistakes off of it, for the most part, it looked like you guys did pretty well. Let's kind of talk about how the team responded to that. We can handle pressure better. We work with house writers every day. Uh, if this is a really long walk, then when they get on you, they they jump pretty high. They told, told get, hey, got pass fake, got to get around them. We're going to come from behind and tip it. They did that. Uh, we can do a better job than what we did. So that's nice of you to say we did well with that. So I, in my eyes, we should have had easy eight, eight or nine turnovers. I mean, there were five that were unacceptable. But with that said, the turnovers didn't lead to points where they led to points in the first time we played them. And that's a, that's a big key. So we tried to, I was very animated tonight, but I tried to calm them down in, in the huddle with the sense of saying, hey, you know, we turned it over, they didn't score, we got the ball back, so it's a wash. Right. And they, they bought into that, which was, which was good. You mentioned you thought you, you guys would be able to make this game a 40 minute game. Is that opposed to some different games throughout the season earlier in the year? Or what about this game do you feel like you're missing? As I said, Buffalo's 3-3, three three, now that's 6. We're at home. Um, we're doing some new, new things offensively and defensively that we couldn't adjust for this game. Um, and we, we, as I said, we subbed a little bit more liberally because I thought we could uh, control tempo and I wanted some fresh legs at the end. Um, and when we um, we got good contributions from everybody. For example, Erica pulled in the double digit minutes, uh, two rebounds, five fouls, but um, was was a factor in there. I mean, when an official comes up to me, it's like, wow, that kid can jump. I'm like, yeah, yeah, she's a volleyball player. Um, so that was that was good, good to hear. But we, uh, yeah, it's just disappointing. You know, it's disappointing when you lose up there the way we did the first time, and it's just as disappointing when you have a chance. Um, when you're coming down the last four months, you still have a chance. So, but with that said, I, our kids played very hard, uh, proud of their effort. And again, you got to judge effort, and we, we win in that column, and we win in a couple other statistical columns. Unfortunately, we didn't win in the point column. So, uh, a couple more shots ball. We shoot 33 percent instead of 31 because they shot 33 um, percent. Again, it's a last possession game. Um, stepping back from this game. The growth of the freshmen from the beginning of the max season to where they are now, what have you seen? How much progression have you seen from them? The learning curve uh, was very steep in the beginning. Uh, it's plateaued, so uh, they've been able to not only uh, learn what we're doing offensively and defensively, but a good example would be I can now draw up a new play that we made in front once in practice but it's going to be effective against the type of defense that the opposing team is running, and then they can execute it. And another sign of their growth, we can now drop two plays in a timeout, and they can remember those plays. Whereas with an experienced team, for example, like last year, it was, hey, we're going to run this play, this play, this play, this play, we can get up to five, five plays, and, and they knew uh, what, what to do. So uh, they're growing that way. They've become unselfish as well, in my, my opinion. Um, they have continued to work when, at this time of year, high school careers are, as a senior, you're, you were done two weeks ago. So they have um, adapted and become durable uh, to the collegiate grind, as people call it, and that's been positive. And it loosened up a little bit more, I think. They can, they're getting thicker skin, as I like to call it, in practice in the game. And as you see, they, 
got knocked down a couple times, and then we were able to get up and get, make a shot the next possession down. And saw, saw some smiles today by them after some main, main shots, whereas before, if they missed a shot, it would be consecutive misses. Now they can shoot, miss it, next possession down, come down, score it, make it a three-point play. And so they're having a short-term memory, more so than a long-term memory. How much of the upperclassmen had a hand in kind of helping them along this year? I think everybody has a, has a hand in the learning curve, no matter what age you are. Uh, at this point of the season, you hear cliches of freshmen, they play a lot of minutes, they're no longer sophomores, and so on and so forth, as you stair-step up the uh, class. But everybody has had a hand in their development. You know, I'm proud of what our, our staff does. And um, I think you can watch our managers on the bench. You know, they're, they're additional coaches, and they're into it as well. And that's got our, our injured kids are even into it. And that's, they're, they're giving effort. And that's, that's what you want. Can you talk a little bit about Deborah Hoekstra? Did you envision a girl who was going to be able to give you double doubles when she first came to you as a freshman? No, I envisioned this type of season for her with the summer she quit this year. Uh, she was in the gym more than any other kid. Uh, she came to our staff saying, hey, find, find me a shooting program. I want to get as many shots up as I can. And I, she made it a competition. She was in this practice uh, court facility 6 a.m. a lot of mornings. 5.30, a lot of mornings, and then she'd go to work. Uh, so yes, I anticipated this type of season for her with the work that she put in during the summer, and she wanted to, to play well. Um, Did you, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, she's been a scorer and a shooter. I'm looking at some of the other things she does now as well. I mean, she, she got a double-double today. She's got five, six now. I mean, can you talk a little, I mean, that's, it's great. Deborah flies in there. She's got a very high motor. You can tell she's a long-distance runner. I mean, this is a kid that's going to run marathons when she graduates. She runs for fun. I mean, one of the few kids that runs for fun, uh, in my opinion. But she she darts in there. And she's got a high motor to go uh, get the ball, and she knows that that's important. Um, and she's really stepped stepped that up. Could she have done that when she was younger? No. Um, she's gotten stronger since she's been here. Uh, she's gotten faster since she's been here uh, due to her. You know, or a weight staff, and she works hard. Uh, bottom, bottom line, the kid works hard, and that's what you need to do at this level because everybody works hard. But I think now with uh, tonight, uh, if I'm not mistaken, she's does. I think she leads the conference in guard uh, rebounds per game, or she's in the, the top three. I don't know how the others did today, uh, but she she's right up there. Can you talk a little bit about her off the court as well? I mean, it, academically, I know she got all district honors and big GPAs, 4-0 or something like that. I mean, that she's Capital One Academic All-American nominee. Um, she's in graduate school, uh, been accepted in Miami, down in Florida. She's a 4-0 student. Um, I want her to loosen up a little bit. <laughs> Ironically, I'd love for her to get a B, <laughs> uh, but she doesn't want that. Um, but she works, the way she works on the court is the way she works in the classroom. Uh, she's a perfectionist. Uh, she wants to give her best at all times. And that's a trademark that I hope is passed on from one class to another because previous classes have passed that on to her. Anything else?